Hi everyone, myself Dr. Saithi, Team MDS Conquer. So today's topic for the MDS finish line is on facial nerve and its applied aspects. So uh, the facial nerve is actually very important. The facial nerve and the trigeminal nerve in the anatomy subject is very important for the basics paper for almost all the departments. So uh, first of all, if it comes as an essay or a short answer, anything should be started with writing the contents. Okay. If it is very short, you can avoid the writing the contents. But for the essay, writing the contents part is very important. So these are the contents that you can write for this facial nerve. So, and in case if it comes as an essay, so this particular discussion or this particular presentation is how to write an essay, okay, because essay is 20 marks, so you have to write a bit lengthy, so you can write like this, if it comes as a short, you have to cut short and you have to write what are exactly important, okay, so in case if it comes in as, a, as an essay, it's better to write the all the facial nerve or sorry all the other cranial nerves and to let the examiner know that you know all the cranial nerves as well okay and amongst that you can highlight the facial nerve to be seventh and you can even highlight that it is both mixed that is it's both sensory and motors so you can highlight that it is mixed nerve and you can highlight that it is seventh cranial nerve okay so i have to write the introduction like it is a seventh cranial nerve and it comes from the or second brain large, so it's nerve of the second brain large, also called as hyoid arch and it is actually composed of around 10,000 neurons and 7,000 of which are myelinated and innervate the nerves of facial expression so you can write the introduction like this okay so coming to the development part you have to say that or you have to write that it is from the second brain arch okay that's very important so which supplies its both motor and the sensory components so you can draw this diagram so diagrams are equally important students because uh, they have see no one has very good time to read the entire lines that you write okay you have to give importance to headings and little important lines that which are very important with that particular topic and the diagrams if you can put your diagrams in there especially for anatomy like subjects then it will score or it will be very much scoring okay so here you can draw the simple diagram and no need to mm -hmm, write all the other nerves where they here lies the facial nerve right with the second brain arch you can give or you can highlight that the others if you can draw it's even more useful but if you can draw the facial nerve if you can just draw the outline and if you can highlight the facial nerve then that's more than enough actually but if you can draw all the others also it's scoring okay it's based on your time while writing the exam so next uh, this is the time during the gen, uh, gestation when the anatomical structures actually appear with this cranial nerve that is seventh cranial nerve so you have to write this in order to increase the bulk of your answer so if you can remember and write this it's very it's very useful so write the exact week of gestation and how the structures are formed at that particular week so you can have a look of this and write so especially you can highlight the seventh the week of gestation where the genicular ganglion which is a ganglion for the seventh cranial nerve you can highlight that and the last that is 12th week of gestation the facial muscles are formed so both these are very important the others if you can just give a, a brief for uh, this that's more than enough but have if this comes an essay and if you can write this that will be very useful so next coming to the nuclei which are very very important for this facial nerve so you have to keep the headings of course the entire thing will be highlighted in your diagram but these headings are important so these are the four important nuclei with respect to the facial nerve okay so here again you can draw this small diagram if you can so here you again you can write this nuclei okay these nuclei the motor nuclei of the cranial seven cranial nerve seven the superior salivatory nucleus and the lacrimatory nucleus okay and the other one is the tractus solitarius which is on this side so you can draw this diagram which is from your chaurasia so it's very important okay so among in the pons it is that uh, those nuclei are there so you have to uh, draw those nuclei okay so simple uh, no need to draw this complex diagram for your understanding i have put this diagram so from the superior salivatory nucleus comes a nerve which is called as nervous intermedius and the post ganglionic fibers will go and at, uh, will be innovated at the 
terigo palatine ganglion okay from there the pre uh, sorry pre ganglionic fibers will innervate the terigo palatine ganglion and from there the post ganglionic fibers will innervate the lacrimal gland and the to that of the hard and soft palates as you can see here it innervate the lacrimal gland and that of the hard and soft palates so it is like this you have to uh, remember so we have to how to write is preganglionic fibers innervate that particular ganglion and postganglionic fibers innervate the lacrimal gland and the hard and soft palates similarly there is one more ganglion here as you can see the submandibular ganglion so preganglionic fibers will go and innervate there and the postganglionic fibers from the submandibular gland will innervate the submandibular and the sublingual gland it is so simple okay and one more important aspect related to the facial nerve is the, it's as per its taste it it, uh, it is for the gustatory sensation or the taste sensation for the anterior two thirds of the tongue so how does it do is it's from the nuclei that is nuclei solitorius and from there via geniculate ganglion which is a ganglion of the seventh cranial nerve comes the corda tympani nerve this corda tympani nerve as you can see will innervate the anterior two thirds of the tongue just have a look of this diagram so that you can have a better idea okay so in short you can give this box and you can nicely give a oh, like this you can draw a box and you can give like what all innervates and what is the nuclei and all that so that will be very useful it will be scoring so no need to put on everything but whatever you can put on there it's enough so especially these three are very important this uh the solitarius, the nuclear solitarius nuclei and the motor fibers which actually innervates the facial muscles and then the visceral motor so from the superior salivated nucleus especially to the lacrimal submandibular and the sublingual gland so these things you have to highlight this box if you put in it will be good so coming to the ganglion so now that we have written uh, given the introduction we have given the development and also we have given the nucleus and the uh, nerves that come out of the nucleus and the ganglions related so again one more heading you can go for the ganglion so what are the ganglions related to the facial nerve are these three ganglions so you can give the again a little in a uh, brief description of those ganglion of how how it works and all that okay you can see here how it the goes on so geniculate ganglion we have seen the for the sensory taste fibers and spinopalatine and pterygopalatine for the lacrimal and submandibular glands or ganglion for the submandibular and the sublingual glands okay the parasympathetic cetitomotor fibers are to these glands so like that you can write so again the, fa uh, the five famous branches of the facial nerve you have to highlight students so you can see in this particular picture it innervates the parotid gland and out when it comes outside it innervates the five it has its five branches to which it innervates the facial muscle so these are the five branches as you can see these include the temporal branch the zygotic zygomatic branch the the buccal branch the marginal mandibular and the cervical branch so like that you can highlight okay so again one more heading you can give it as the branches and distribution so within the facial nerve canal are these the get, uh, greater petrosal nerve to stapedius and the corda tympani at the exit from the stylomaster foramen are these three that is post auricular digastric and the stylohyoid and again after innovating the parotid gland the terminal branches are these five so you can highlight like this so this diagram which is there from Shaurashya has to fall for the facial nerve so you have to draw this diagram so it's very simple you are already well aware of this so you can draw these three nuclei uh, as we have already discussed the lacrimatory and the superior salivary nucleus the nucleus to structure solitarius and the motor nuclei and again you have to draw like this exactly how it is you have to draw so the sensory root via great uh, uh, the greater petrosal it innervates the um, the lacrimal gland and the terebopalatine ganglion and all that and then again via corda tympani it innervates the tongue and again uh, via it crosses uh, and for the motor nucleus again goes and gives it motor fibers to the five branches so this diagram is very important which is there in your shaurashya so you need to draw this diagram so again after drawing this diagram you can give that what all nerves supplies to those specific muscles if you again draw a box that will be very useful okay so if you again draw this box it will be very useful 
so you can see what all nerves supplies to those specific muscles it's simple the name the, the nerve itself has the muscle name so you can write like that so diagram if you follow the rest all you can elaborate the answer so again the vascular supply of the facial nerve is also equally important so intracranially it is uh, anterior inferior cerebral artery within the facial canal and again extracranially so what are the branches and what are the vascular supply again to this facial nerve you have to write okay so this is a brief anatomy of the facial nerve that you need to put in so you have to write the nuclei you have to write the branches of the facial nerve okay and you have to draw the diagram this is very important and the ganglions associated with this so three headings should be there the branches and the nuclei as well as a ganglion associated so all these if you put forward with a beautiful diagram it's enough so development diagram you can draw and again the nuclei is, uh, what are the nuclei associated also you can draw so three diagrams if you draw that's enough okay then again you can elaborate the answer of history uh, so the patient has come you have to take the detailed history of all these which are there next you have to do this particular test like the shimmer test since the uh, uh, facial nerve innervates the lacrimal gland the shimmer test is only to test the uh, if there is any dryness of the eye or ophthalmia so you have to put a filter paper in the eye and to, and you have to measure the wetness of the filter paper okay like that the shimmer test is done to check for xerophthalmia and also you can check for the taste you can ask the patient to taste something and whether you have to differentiate whether it's sweet or sour or something like that you can ask him to do so and also the salivary flow you can test all these you can do okay so so coming to the various applied aspects so uh, for any even if uh, any question for any department applied aspects is very important so we know the main applied aspect related to the facial nerve is the bell's palsy so that has to fall in okay so it should be like it can be supranuclear or infranuclear so what are the main differences of the supranuclear you can see in this diagram okay so uh, you have to follow this so in supranuclear so if it is uh, above that above the nucleus then the lower part of the opposite side is being paralyzed if it is infranuclear the whole of the same side is paralyzed so that you can see in this diagram okay so next what are the reasons for the facial nerve injury it could be trauma either because of any forceps uh, delivery or penetrating the middle layer and all that any bone fracture so what are the uh, reasons for the facial paralysis are all these it iatrogenic could be the local anesthesia that causes the transient facial paralysis and also the parotid or mastoid surgery so so this diagram again if you put it in the applied aspects that will be enough so where the if the level of injury and the symptoms shown so this is again from your chaurasia if you put in that will be enough okay so draw this diagram as well it will add on to your marks then idiopathic reasons could be the bell's palsy the meckens and rosenthal syndrome and the heat fort syndrome infections it could be otitis media mastoiditis ramsey hunt syndrome and encephalitis so this if you can it's good the bilateral conditions and the unilateral conditions as you can see so these is just the names if you can write that's good and if it is an oral medicine or opath uh, students then if you can give other description of these syndromes that will be again add, adding to your point so just have a look of these syndromes if you can add some uh, points to these like for example meckens and rosenthal syndrome we know it's a triad right so it has the colitis granulomatosa and uh, scrotal tongue as well as facial palsy so like that if you add to every of these uh, 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 conditions to each of these conditions and it would be useful so next bell's palsy you can give the definition that's enough so definition is enough and where it is more common that you can write it's enough and then uh, what is the etiology so you can write these so clinical features of bell's palsy is very important so even if it is transient facial nerve palsy it also shows same clinical features so you have to write these clinical features it's it's enough if you write all these okay once if you see these and if you can go through this person you can correlate then it will be useful for you to remember so that's it so you have to start with the anatomy you have to start with introduction you have to give a brief of development 
of what and then you have to go into the anatomy of its nuclei of its associated ganglion and the branches and wherever required you have to put in diagrams and then you have to come to the history part of how you take the history and what are the tests you do and then you have to go for the applied aspects wherein you have to write the facial palsy whether it's infranuclear or supra or supranuclear and then you have to give the various causes of how the facial palsy can occur and you can give the diagram of uh, the symptoms at which the part the symptoms are shown if you draw the diagram from your chaurash it's it's scoring and again the other unilateral and bilateral conditions and if you put more uh, uh, symptoms of the bell's palsy or facial palsy features that's enough so this is how you present the papers so you have to write the contents and to conclude you have to write that anatomy of the facial nerve is is at most important for a uh, dental practitioner or because it uh, to to go uh, to perform any dental procedures so like that you can conclude so your conclusion is not that important just you can conclude with one line or two lines the main thing is the content okay the contents the headings and the diagrams is important that's it so references you can give your references and wherever i have highlighted some articles you can even write those articles if you want